Malaria is a disease that even today, it's the single largest cause of death in children. And it's mostly a disease of sub-Saharan Africa in terms of death. Those patient populations are both economically uh, and logistically underserved. So that's a big motivator for us. And then on the science side, my focus has always been developing new approaches to therapeutics. So we're most interested in finding a new way to attack a disease that didn't exist before and really proving that works, which means moving it into the clinic and working with it in humans. You need different drugs to treat different patient populations, and we have a very small number of available drugs for malaria. The majority of the ones we have have been around for 20, 40, 50 years. So the way we think about safety, the way we think about usability, those rules were very different 40, 50 years ago. We're treating children, we're treating pregnant women as another target population, travelers who don't know what malaria is. We need really safe drugs. Drugs last a year to 10 years in the clinic before you have clinical resistance. So having that continual introduction of new drugs that work by different mechanisms ensures you can deal with resistance. Right now, every first-line therapeutic depends on one class of anti-malarial drugs. We're starting to see resistance to that class emerge in Central Asia, Thai-Cambodian border. We're seeing 40 to 60% of presenting patients who have resistance. When that happens, it's not that long likely before those drugs are failing. This was the second compound that acted on a novel mechanism. Novartis has developed an inhibitor that works on the same target. It's a protein in the parasite called PFATP4. The mechanism is really unique, so it affects directly the parasite, but we believe what actually happens is it primes the infected red blood cells to be cleared by the host. So the mechanism by which the drug works takes advantage of the way your body gets rid of old red cells. And that means the way resistance would develop is different. Right? So we're utilizing host in order to get rid of infected tissue, and that's potentially a real advantage. We really won't know if that's important until we get deeper into clinical trials, but that's one of the things we're really excited about. We've done two phases of testing. The classic phase one is safety. Uh, that we did in Memphis in the University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center. So this has to date been a really, really safe drug. We really had no serious adverse events. We had nobody stop taking it while they were on it. That's been really encouraging. When we finished that, we partnered with an Australian institution that's developed a challenge model. They enroll a healthy subject, they actually give them malaria in the clinic, and then we test the drug in that individual in a really controlled setting. We look at the level of parasites in their blood. When they're detectable, but they're not causing symptoms, we treat. And that lets us see how does the drug work? Is it fast or slow? Is it still tolerated in a patient? The answer to which is this is a really rapidly acting drug. That means if you're really sick and we give it to you, a day or two later, you're starting to feel better. We're reducing the likelihood that you would die. So that rapid action is a characteristic we really look for. And the safety seems to be the same in patients who have malaria. So now we're expanding that into a country where it's patients who walk into the clinic actually ill, Peru. And we're working in Peru because they get both types of major malarias that are seen worldwide. So in one clinical trial, we can test our compound against both types of malaria. Most people who do what I do for a living, they're doing really well to get one compound in the clinic. So it feels really good.